Have you ever noticed how two people can be in the same relationship, receiving the same affection, the same reassurance, the same effort, yet one feels deeply loved while the other still feels unsure? Nothing obvious is wrong, no red flags, no lack of communication, and yet one person feels secure while the other feels unsettled or disconnected. If you've ever wondered why that happens, this video is for you. Because what many people misunderstand about love is this. Love isn't just something that happens between people. It's something that happens inside the brain. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this is the first video in a series on the science of love. And we're starting with the brain because once you understand how love is processed, a lot of confusion around relationships start to make sense. Today, I wanna to help you understand how your brain sees love because the way you experience connection has less to do with how much love is present and more to do with how your brain interprets it. Let's start with a shift in perspective. Most of us grow up thinking love is something that we receive. If someone shows it clearly enough, consistently enough, then we should feel it. And if we don't feel loved, we assume something must be wrong with the relationship or us. But that's not how the brain works. Your brain doesn't passively absorb love. It actively interprets signals, words, gestures, tone, facial expressions, and touch, and assigns meaning to them. That meaning making happens fast, automatically, and mostly outside of your awareness. That's why two people can receive the exact same expression of love and have completely different experiences of it. One person feels warmth and connection, the other feels suspicious, uneasy, or just nothing at all. And it's not because one of them is broken or ungrateful. It's because their brains are running different interpretive filters. Think about vision for a moment. We like to think we see the world exactly as it is, but that's not true. What you see is a construction. Your brain takes in light, fills in gaps, and makes predictions and creates an image. That's why optical illusions work. Your eyes see one thing, your brain interprets another. Case in point, do you remember this photograph? Some people see a yellow and white dress while others see a blue and black dress. It's an optical illusion. Your brain fills in missing information based on what it assumes about the lighting and different assumptions lead to different perceptions. Love works the same way. What you experience as feeling love isn't a direct recording of someone's behavior. It's your brain's interpretation of what that behavior means, filtered through your past experiences, your expectations, and your beliefs about yourself and relationships. Your brain carries internal models, sometimes called schemas, about who you are and how relationships work. These models start forming early in life and get refined over time through repeated experiences. They answer questions like, what do I deserve? How reliable are other people? What usually happens when I get close? Every signal of love you receive passes through these internal models before you consciously feel anything. Let me give you a clear example. Imagine someone whose internal model says, I'm basically lovable and relationships are generally safe. When their partner leaves them a kind note or sends a reassuring text, it, the signal fits the model. The brain interprets it as confirmation. Love lands. It feels good, calming, and stabilizing. Now imagine someone else whose internal model says, I'm hard to love, or people leave once they really see me. That same kind note may be interpreted very differently. The brain might read it as politeness, obligation, or something that won't last. The words register, but the emotional meaning gets filtered out. Not because love isn't there, but because it doesn't fit the model. That's the first filter, self-perception. If your brain doesn't believe love applies to you, it has trouble letting it in. Now let me give you a different example because not all filters are about worth. Imagine two people again, both in relationships where their partners are consistent and caring. One person feels secure. When something ambiguous happens, like a delayed text or a distracted evening, this person assumes a neutral or benign explanation. Their brain isn't alarmed. Let's say the other person feels chronically uneasy. Their brain is scanning for threats. A delayed text feels ominous. A distracted evening feels like withdrawal. Love is present, but the brain is busy checking for danger. This situation is more about safety than self-worth. The brain learned at some point that closeness can flip quickly, that connection doesn't stay stable. So even positive signals get evaluated through a threat detection lens. In this case, love doesn't register because the brain is bracing for loss. 
So same relationship behaviors, but different internal filters. And here's the important part. These filters operate before conscious thought. By the time you notice that you feel anxious, dismissed or disconnected, your brain has already run its assessment. It has already decided whether the signal was safe, trustworthy or relevant. That's why people may say, I know they love me, but I don't feel it. The information gets in cognitively, but emotionally, it just doesn't connect. This also explains why reassurance often fails. If someone's internal model says, I'm not enough, or this won't last, reassurance doesn't override that model. The words might even increase anxiety because now there's a mismatch between what's being said and what the brain expects to be true. If this is you, you may seek more reassurance or you analyze tone. You look for certainty that can never fully satisfy a filter that hasn't been updated yet. But this isn't about being needy or insecure. It's about how the brain prioritizes predictability. The brain values consistency more than happiness. A familiar pattern, even a painful one, feels safer than an unfamiliar one. If your brain learned that love equals anxiety, performance, or instability, it will recognize that pattern more easily than calm, steady care. Peace can feel foreign. Safety can feel suspicious. That's why people sometimes say things like, I don't know why I'm uneasy. Nothing's wrong. Something is happening. It's just happening at the level of perception and not behavior. So what do you do with this? For now, the most important step is not to force yourself to feel differently. It's to remember that what you feel in the moment is passing through a filter, not giving you a pure reading on how much love there actually is. And that can sound abstract, but it changes the internal conversation. Instead of automatically thinking, if I don't feel loved, something must be wrong with me or with this relationship, you can add one more line or my brain may be interpreting this through an old model. You don't have to catch every instance or track every interaction, even once or twice over the next few days when you notice yourself feeling oddly disconnected or uncomfortable in a situation that seems caring, see if you can gently remind yourself, this might be my love filter at work. You're not trying to override your reaction or convince yourself to feel grateful. You're just loosening the grip of the assumption that your current feeling is the whole story. Because once you realize that love is a brain-based perception, not just a relationship event, struggling to feel loved stops being a personal failure and becomes a pattern that can be understood and patterns can change. Your brain built these filters for a reason. At some point, they probably helped you make sense of your world, but filters that once protected you can become obstacles in the present. The good news is that the brain is adaptable. The same process that built these filters can revise them once you understand what you're working with. And that's where this series is going. In the next video, we're gonna talk specifically about why some people struggle to feel love even when love is clearly present. What's happening in the brain when love's detection system is calibrated more for threat than connection? If you've ever wondered why love seems to come so easily for some people and feel so complicated for you, that video will give you some answers. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you in the next video.